Manchester United versus Aston Villa predicted 11. Let's do it. Okay, starting with the players that we see on the screen. This is going to be the selection for the run-in for this campaign. I think the amount of games, the congested fixtures, the injuries, all of the trials and tribulations that this Manchester United side has had to deal with. It's been an incredibly difficult season and I couldn't be any more proud of them. And Everton Hogg needs better players and Everton Hogg needs more depth, especially coming off the bench because we saw against Spurs how lacking we are. If we go into the next season without addressing this issue, we're not going to win Jack's squad. But that's for another day for another conversation. Let's just talk about the game versus Aston Villa. Starting with the number nine. And I think we have to start with this man, my guy, Marcus Rashford. I think he's the best nine we have at this point. And that's a damning verdict on Martial and Beggars, who's, I mean, Martial in particular, who's been here for a long time. I'll be a bit concerned about Marcus Rashford starting up top if, for example, Jaden Sancho and or Anthony wasn't performing. But Jaden Sancho and Anthony have been performing relatively well. Anthony, I think, has had a more consistent run of relatively well performances. But for me, Jaden Sancho in his last few games, he's been doing exactly exactly what I've been begging him to do, which is keep things simple. Rebuild his confidence slowly. A lot of pressure comes from him and his price tag and everybody expecting him to bang. And I think he's had too much of that on his shoulder. But for me, Jaden Sancho playing well, looking bright, looking confident is what I, I've, I've been excited to see more than anything. In the game versus Spurs, we saw him keeping things simple, finding little pockets of space, what he did well at Borussia Dortmund and what he did well enough to warrant a move to Manchester United. He did against Spurs. And that's what I loved seeing about Jaden. My man, Jaden, I couldn't be any more happier. So this is the strongest starting four. Let's talk about this little space here. Is it going to be Christian Eriksen again? And unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be the case because he looks absolutely exhausted. He's played every single game to the utmost ability whenever he's been asked to feature. And in the start of the season, nobody expected him to play this many games. Is it going to be Fred or is it going to be this man? And I think it's going to be this man, Marcel Sabitzer. Fred, we've talked about how so many times on this space, how oh, he's a family at this point for Manchester United fans. When he came on for Eriksen in the 60th minute, here are some clips that I want to show you. The first, His first touch was a sloppy pass in front of his 18-yard box to one of the world-class number nines in Harry Kane. Give him the benefit of the doubt. It was his first touch. Second situation, he's arguing with Bruno Fernandes. There's a throw-in happening behind him, and he turns his back, which I've never seen before. Thankfully, it results in nothing. And then his third touch is one thing that I hate in midfielders doing is inviting press and inviting danger to just come waltzing in. And, and Casemiro is literally right in front of him. And albeit the pass to Fed was a little sketchy, but when an opposition player is in front of you sprinting at you full split, you do not just half-ass place the ball to your fellow midfielder and he put Casemiro in a dangerous situation there and I think Marcel Sabitzer he might not be a world-class six or world-class eight but I think he provides a bit more balance alongside Casemiro this is probably the best team I'm gonna go with a tricky two nil I think we can keep a clean sheet this time around I think these players I think they can I, can th I think they can do it we're gonna go two nil I know Una Emery is gonna be a bit techie but hey we'll get the job done come on 